Come on, watch. Don't keep God waiting. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey! You alright? Don't fing touch me! Let's get this over and done with so I can go back to my hole. If you haven't had enough time to. It's not the medication, damn it! I just need to breathe. He won't hurt you. Yeah? You gonna stop him? He's not a mindless beast chasing you down a corridor. That covers the NTFs at C2. What about the SCPs? 343 at least likes to pretend he's more civilized. You're safe. My hero. Have I arrived late? Or perhaps too early? God, I presume. In the corporeal. A pleasure to meet you, O5 Jacobs. <clears throat> and uh, this is my associate. Ah, yes, Mr. Warthorn. Good to finally make your acquaintance. Likewise. You've caused quite a stir in the heavenly water cooler. <laughs> uh... I apologize for the deception. We have no water coolers where I reside. It's more of a golden fountain at the end of an ethereal river. It really is quite a sight. Uh, <clears throat> not sitting with us, Mr. Jacobs? Old habits. Prefer to keep my distance. As you wish. More time to converse with your associate. I was very impressed at your ability to stay out of trouble at, oh, uh, what do you call it? C2. I wouldn't exactly say staying out of trouble. It was more a trying to stay in one piece kind of deal. And did you? <sighs> Physically. Before we get started, is there anything you'd like to ask? He's a big boy. All-knowing. No questions to ask. I would prefer the opportunity. As I understand it, humanity is quite fond of the notion of consent. We're also big on the idea of free will. Isn't that right, Jacobs? Then what is it you'd like to know, 343? God on. <clears throat> if you'd please. Sure. I do find it more suitable than being compared to a used car salesman. Sorry. Wasn't personal. Just set it to nudge 035 into- Your concern is unwarranted. I have been called much worse. I've no taken apologies here. Oh, you will. We all have something to repent. This room requires a more aesthetically pleasing design. I shall return shortly. That could have gone better. You're doing okay, just take it easy. I'm trying. Okay. I'm ready. Good. Because I'm going to need you to play good cop to my bad cop in this. We've only got one shot at getting the first recorded conversation with this guy, and if we want a clear confirmation as to whether or not he's actually God, we have to work together. Understood? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Try to relax. I doubt he'll throw anything we won't expect. Gentlemen, shall we begin? We're ready. Speaking of 035, it claims to also be God, or at least created by them. Zeus, Hephaestus, you get the gist. Any relation? A fool may play the part of God, but beneath the mask, you still be a fool. That a confession, or...? <laughs> I do not deny that there are those in my world who possess powers beyond the capabilities of humanity. Yet, the comprehension is in the eye of the beholder. We believe what we see, but what we see isn't what we believe. Seems a bit blasphemous to allow these beings to go about representing you. Couldn't you just, you know, 
zap. Do you spot every fly or crush every ant that pervades your domain? My instructions have always been clear, but it is up to mankind to follow those teachings. Oh, so it's our fault. Lovely. A lack of understanding doesn't help. Assumptions are tools of the uneducated. Probably could have used some of that knowledge, huh? Might have come in handy somewhere down the line. No, you wish for every charlatan to be punished, then say no more. I didn't. Stay back, or Four Eyes gets the sharp end. Well, this is awkward. Just gonna. The Great Pretender. You stole my line. Heresy is a crime punishable by death. But for you, I'll be merciful. It's a fine line between pleasure and... What did you do with him? Put that mask back in its cell! Once punishment has been concluded, it will be returned. Hmm. Dio. Rejected by God. And beings more deserving of that title than he. They being... A tale unworthy of the voice of God. We'll take it in writing. It must be hard to insist you're the one true God when we have clear evidence to the contrary. Have I not proven my omnipotence? Ah, but as you say, belief is in the eye of the beholder. We've got reality benders, physics destroying dimension hopping creatures all over the place. Popping things in and out of sight isn't much comparatively in the way of proof. What he means is that in the way of definitive examples of your godhood, creation, heaven, hell, you're a little on the short side. My ability are not tokens to be demanded, as it is written. How convenient. Much. As convenient as your foundation, containing the beast that would otherwise wreak destruction upon the world I created from nothing. What if it were God? Perhaps a change of fate would be enough to satisfy you. You wouldn't. He's bluffing. What value is there in deception? Is not influencing the path of mankind a godlike act? Then everyone would die. Nothing would be left. To start from nothing is no new concept to me. But we are not all of humanity. You can't punish everyone because we don't believe. The desire, however terrible, was not my own. It was yours. Wishful thinking is not one that considers the consequences. That is the difference between a pretender granting wishes and a god who answers prayers. Well, if all these other beings are simply posers, then why don't you tell us a little bit about them? Provide evidence of their deception. Their falsehood is evident in their fallibility. How many cults has your foundation discovered in your observations? I don't know. A couple dozen. Too many. Yet, despite this, their evil remains at bay. Yaldabaoth commands their sacrifice as pawns, demanding the destruction of technology to return my children to a more primitive state. Milkane alternatively seeks to force humanity into transcending into realms you are far too young to comprehend. A journey you would not survive, nor return from. That in a spiritual sense? As for Kahara... The other name. Please. The Scarlet King, as you call him, desires only destruction. A futile effort, but a simple one. Your very fear of him brings forth his influence. But what do these three have in common? Bad dental work? Amusing. If they were truly gods up to my standing, would they not have already succeeded in their goals? For what 
purpose? Does a god require the services of lesser beings to carry out their design? A desire? I created the universe with no such vessels. My power is absolute. Surely a god as powerful as that would use their might to slay evil. Even evil deserves the right to free will. To enforce my control to more than an influence would make me, as you say, evil. I do what I must. Their infighting and seclusion are in part a result of my will, but the choices they've made seal their fates. Which makes tracking your abilities virtually impossible. The freedom in choice was always designed with the potential of this belief. But every choice is not without its consequences. Some you can clearly see, while others, well, are obscure. Were you born into godhood, or did you inherit it somehow? To be born infers a beginning, which implies an eventual end. Existence and I are inextricably linked. Well, pardon us for not understanding time as an infinite loop. Even that is quite an incorrect observation of how I function. But to answer your initial question, the burden of godhood has, and always shall be, my own. Sorry, excuse for a burden. You care to repeat that? You're hardly treating your powers as though they were much of a burden. By your own admission, prayers go unanswered, free will decides humanity's fate nine times out of ten, and the odd exception isn't always your doing. From where I'm standing, it almost seems as though you prance on in, give birth to whatever species you're bored enough to make, then split without consequences. To view my presence as a luxury shows a remarkable lack of understanding and the responsibilities of the one true deity. Yeah, yeah, we get the gist of it. You filter the cries for help and keep the boogeyman at bay. What's confusing is all the things that you've told us so far don't seem to be all that time-consuming. I mean, if eternity's nothing for you, then how is the odd magic trick and bait-and-switch that strenuous? Leaders of any kind are faced with decisions that hold vast and uncertain consequences. While omnipotence may grant me the gift of foresight, it does not allow the certainty in the face of free will. That is the penalty for obtaining freedom. The right to do wrong. To march headfirst into oblivion. I have sworn to never again stand in the way of mankind's ability to choose. And so my decision to act for good could very well tip the scales alternatively. But what if our collective will is to beg you for help? That's our choice. By that point, you'd be more of an ally than God. Or would that be too much of a step down for you off that ivory tower? If you are implying my inaction is not with the best intentions... Oh, I'd say it sounds more like an abusive partner gaslighting their significant other. You can't create the circumstances of evil, then blame us for it when we don't clean up the mess. As I have said, mortal, my efforts are not limited to mere choice. My eyes and ears are spread out amongst the stars. That's a lot of senses at work. Just how far does your presence spread? How many forms do you take? Your lifespans would not bless the time it would take to recount. Figures. Alright. Recent history. For a time, my presence was more in influence than direct. Visions, images, things that nowadays men used to stray more people from the path. I provided warnings of the future to Nostradamus, whose predictions of history you can attest to being accurate. More like up to interpretation, you have a bit of a penchant for that. 
Interpretation is the key to humanity's free will. If you are unable to choose the right paths alone, then that is your cross to bear. Little on the nose. In a year's time, Nostradamus predicted that a great plague would befall humanity. Perhaps then you'll believe my word. Not the pestilence, right? Hmm. No. But as with my teachings, humanity will interpret fact over feeling. Even if I were to be blatant in my actions, man is perhaps more ignorant than you give them credit. I'll say. There was one account with SCP-187 where she saw you as a little girl. Our staff witnessed you as you are, but she, well, she has something of a future sight. It is not a form I am certain I have been, but if it is in reference to what I am to become... By implication, somewhat permanently. Perhaps in your future, it is possible. But not certain. To you. Interesting. That path is determined by you, not myself. The image of a child may yet prove useful in your future, as the forms of others in your past. Soothsayers, mediums, healers throughout history, lost to your time. But for all my efforts, absolution was not to be found. Then what were you doing in Prague trying to heal the sick? I had been observing the Foundation for a time, and determined that first contact would be an acceptable risk. Why? Isn't what you're doing with us direct action? A hidden organization, separated from the majority of mankind, still skeptical of my powers despite first-hand proof? Speaking through you would be akin to mere advice. Whispers and ripples across the fabric of mankind's development. We're a way for you to cheat the system. A little lowbrow for a god, don't you think? I do what is necessary. Uh-huh. The people I healed in Prague were a test of my abilities. Drawn your gaze towards me. Gave us quite the chase tracking you down through the city. Those tapes of you popping up all over the place still crack me up. That rooftop one still gets me. <laughs> right? And the agent that looks all dumb. <laughs> <laughs> all my demonstrations are music to you? No. No, your tricks are impressive. But that's all they are. Tricks. You move things around, teleport, refurnish a room with decor that's so 12th century BC. But where's the big stuff? Big stuff? Well, you threatened us with total annihilation a couple minutes ago. But can you do the same for yourself? Can God cancel himself out? Yes. Can you create something or someone more powerful than you? It is possible. But for what purpose would I deem such an act necessary? Consider it a lesson in the nature of balance. You're sitting on the top of the food chain, which is something I've only considered accurate to 682. Don't you think that perhaps that sort of position clouds your judgment a little? No. So certain. Then why don't you make a stone appear on this table? Something that you can never pick up. But why? Humility. Something to clue you in to what an even playing field is. I have no use for- Oh, for crying out- Your use is exactly the point! We have to deal with creatures that are far more powerful than us on a daily basis, yet you won't bother to lift a finger to help us out. What's the use of free will if we're doomed to die anyway? That's the point. That is the reason. Because maybe the only thing that'll convince you is to feel the same fear we do. And what fear is that? The fear of not being strong enough to overcome the impossible. Will you try it, or is the outcome something you're not willing to face? I have nothing to prove. Humanity elected pain, suffering, and fear when they disobeyed my one rule. I have broken no such bargain. Of course. Only God sets the rules for God.
So can you narrow down just how far your omniscience extends? The length of my powers is beyond your comprehension. Yeah, you guys really love that line. Look, I don't just sit on my ass and pull a Larry King in these interviews, you know. I've done my research. Studied spiritualism, philosophy, astrology, numerology, cultism, cosmology, physics, and metaphysics. I've read tons of theology and religious texts. The Bible, the Talmud, the Quran, Tao Te Ching, Kojiki, everything from the Book of Shadows to the Tapitaka. So yeah, don't think we're quite as dense as we look. <laughs> don't look at me. I actually am as dense as I look. Then I shall attempt as best as possible. I filter through every corner of creation. My influence is spread across every world, throughout nature, within the very atoms that make up your physical beings. Any lack thereof is dictated by my will, and my will alone. What benefit does seeing an eighth of humanity do a number two at the same time give you? There are things that I allow individuals to maintain in private where my presence is not required. My sight does not need to be set everywhere at once, merely where I choose it to be. So your own private security monitoring system, potentially anywhere at any time, all at your discretion? In your terms, yes. In my terms, yes. That's a lot of privacy you've invaded. If you ever tune into a channel, you probably should have left closed. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. All life is a part of my family. Even parents give their kids some space to grow. They know when it's best not to be there as much as they know when they're needed. But we've all gotten bored. You ever get bored, God? No. No? Never took a peek into the lives of someone and watched them have a little private time? I don't want to hear about this much. I agree. Oh, so you have looked in on someone you shouldn't have. That was not what I meant. Sure it wasn't. Watch. Move on. <sighs> now we know how your sight works in terms of space, but what about on a temporal level? Are you only able to view the present, or can you also see the past and predict the future? In a sense. In reality, I've never experienced your concept of time. Such a linear thing, very set in its way. Within a rhythm, frayed to an infinitesimal degree, and each strand is as unbreakable as the strongest element. But for me, time is simply a location rather than a concept. A room with many doors to many places beyond. I can visit them all simultaneously and never have left. I'd ask if that were overwhelming, but given you've done this all your life, do I call it life? I haven't much use for a word. Existence? Presence? No, no, um... Etern? Latin? Old English, it's poetic. Alrighty then. You've done this for your Eterne, viewing everything that exists, does, has, or will simultaneously. From your metaphor, I assume you also mean alternative timelines that result in parallel universes, or what some refer to as the Omniverse. Do you exist there too? Indubitably. That's a lot to manage. Did you start with just one at first? Uh, also important. Was it ours? I cannot recall, although I believe it hardly matters at this point. A potential side effect of free will being implemented in your design. To allow the luxury of choice on such a monumental scale require that the consequences of every potential outcome take manifestation. You mean to tell me that if I decide to drink regular or decaf in the morning, almond or soy? Sugar or bitter, each of those results in a new universe being born? Precisely. But there must be beyond numbers of them. One person alone... Now we begin to understand. Although many of these universes have died out, or their potential squandered by wars and disease that have ravaged our life, what? 
two universes re-emerged since. By sheer coincidence, their alternating paths resulted in a single moment where they had overlapped once more. Then what? Choice. Division. Mitosis. In a sense, the life cycle of the smallest and simplest organisms do somewhat mirror the life cycle of my creation. That's poetic. The whole eternity must become quite boring. The circle of life constantly repeating. I met a level of discontent. All things considered, and I mean that absolutely, it does feel as though my consistent presence amongst my creations is more a form of habit and necessity than it is out of interest. Maybe a change of view would shake things up. Let's get hypothetical. What would you do if you woke up one day- I don't sleep. <laughs> Same. What would you do if you suddenly found yourself powerless? You mean human? Sure. On a physical level, I would have limited senses at my disposal, numbing me to the ebb and flow of existence. At the same time, what few I retain would be substantially more sensitive to even the slightest stimuli. But on an emotional level, I would know that residing in this corporeal form would only be temporary. It would serve no purpose. Okay, but suppose you didn't. Suppose that for as long as your human life lasted, you would never even know you were God, or that you would return to Godhood once you had died. Imagine a 343 with the same restraints and uncertainties that plague humanity. What would you say to that? Why? So you can understand what it's like to be human. I understand humanity. I created you. Yes, you understand us. You made us. You study us. You give us what we have. But the barrier still exists. Everything you programmed a human being to be. But you still don't know what it's like to be one. At the end of the day, we're two separate entities. It, I would have to consider the merit of such actions. Is there anything you'd give your powers up for? Why do you ask this question? You must have given us the lives you did, made us the way we are. Because you felt this was in some way an improvement over what you had, maybe we're what you wish you could be. No. What? You're telling me there's no way you'd benefit I from us? I said no. My reasons are my own. Proceed. Why do you insist on coming here, to Earth, out of the billions of planets you've supposedly created? Surely there must be more interesting things for you to do or find out there. I have seen all there is to know. You didn't fully predict the separation of universes. Maybe there's more unknowns out there in the undiscovered country. You misunderstand me. I have seen all past, present, future. If anything unprecedented were to wriggle free at any point, in any time, across all planes of existence, then I would be the first, and most likely, only to know. If that's the case, then nothing should surprise you. You could predict the future and tell us how to avoid potentially devastating outcomes. Why don't you? Choice once again rears its ugly head. I not only see the future, but all potential futures. I live in them all, but I am uncertain as to which will become your reality, until all necessary pieces have fallen into place. Once again, the frailty rests with man. Yeah, I don't buy it. For someone who did everything he could to create us, you sure seem to belittle our existence on the regular. What about the whole made you in his image thing? You certainly seem to be skirting the definition a bit on appearances alone. My physical attributes are not tied to my natural form. Then why the facade? We're all alike here. 
for the most part. You know that, I know that. There's no need to play dress up for the lowly mortals. I prefer this form. Yeah, yeah, of course. Gotta keep some degree of separation. But it just doesn't add up. Why would you make us the way we are, condemn us for taking advantage of the traits we were given, then hang around caring whether we get wiped out or not? It makes no sense. Humanity is my responsibility. It is not my place to simply stand by, nor interfere directly. I must remain. What if we don't need you? Much. Less of us believe in you day by day. You're becoming less and less relevant every day of your inaction. People die, catastrophes manifest on a daily basis, and new and more dangerous SCPs are born into this world just to add another threat to the overwhelming honeypot that is the apparent death wish of our universe. Calm down. And through all that, you can't spare one miserable life. Someone who is supposedly made unto your image. You couldn't care less. An innocent child who can hardly take care of themselves? For what? Preserving the moral fiber of your being? How righteous and godlike you must feel to let the lives of everyone you've created hang at the end of the noose you tied from the first day we were born! Do you see me as a fault for a personal slight, Isaac? Do you curse me for the pain you feel? I'm sure you'd like the idea of living rent-free in my head, but think again. You just seem to be a little too eager to stick around a species that by your own definition as our creator is inferior. Almost like you're envious. Envious of what? You claim responsibility for our ongoing survival. You also infer that you exist by nature, across all timelines, all universes. You have no concept of time as we experience it. But that simply means that you have the pressures of an Eterne mounting on you at every moment. What is your point? Don't you know? You should. You know everything. I think you envy our freedom. Our lives are smaller by comparison, but we aren't beholden to some grand responsibility. We live how we want, we can be what we want. We're not held back by the knowledge of what destiny holds. Our fragility or ignorance or whatever you want to call it is what you want. That's why you designed us this way. We're an imperfect copy of you because that's the kind of existence you wish you could have. To live, to die. To see. The merit of your argument rests on the idea that I feel I have been robbed of a right I have never known, and therefore can never miss or be envious of. Could any humans miss wielding the power of God when they have never controlled such a thing? You don't need to have loved and lost to want to feel it. I think you underestimate how many people wish they could have the kind of power you have. Let's move on. We know that the doctor in charge of your case disappeared shortly after raising concerns about your requests for interaction. Did he? And what was his name? Don't play dumb with me. Easy there. And disappeared is putting it too nicely. A man was wiped from existence while studying you. His associate also vanished shortly around the time of your last visit. A Dr. Leslie Beck. Ah, a good man. Very well read. Handsome too. He never existed either. Not until he took over your file. No family, no forms of enlistment. It's like Beck was dropped in with a pair of divine forceps. Except for some reason, we all remember him, but we don't remember his predecessor. I'm sorry, but is there a question here? What happened? The actions of God are not for mankind to question, as is the motivation behind them. Last I checked, the Lord works in mysterious ways didn't get me out of a parking ticket. You're seriously gonna hide behind that defense? There are some things humanity is better off not knowing. Truths that expose you to danger, or inspire you to seek it out on some misguided voyage. We lock things up all the time that by all means we should never have known about in the first place. But it's our job, and we're willing to face those consequences. 
and yet you still hide their existence from the wider population. Why is that? For your safety or theirs. Humans who seek the truth rarely react appropriately once it has been found. Many of you try to deny it regardless, while some of you spend your lives lashing out to protect yourself from imagined horrors from around every corner. Truth is trauma for the weak will. You think you see it here, but even the Foundation used the truth from behind safety glass and locked doors. Remove that filter, and your minds would break. You understand. You fear me as much as you hate. Preservation is the only motivation that we truly share. But my reasoning outclasses your own. What your missing doctor failed to understand is that the truths I hold would have destroyed him regardless, not to mention the catastrophes that would have resulted in passing them on to you. You're trying to tell me that this was necessary. I declare that my actions were necessary. Did he have kids, a family, partner, parents, pets, a freaking bowling team? Did he spend his life doing good deeds or bad? Does it even matter? You took it from him. From everyone. You didn't just kill someone. What you did was worse. And we don't even know how many more there are. We only know about this single person by chance. Your actions erase the consequences of a man in this world. You denied him his choices. That was necessary. But you can't help us for any other reason? It was necessary. You could have done anything. You're God, are you not? Erased his memory, teleported away, asked for a damn transfer. Did you think we were going to deny you? Isaac, calm down. No. No, he doesn't get to get away with this. What kind of irresponsible god would just wave his hand and tear you out of time and space for doing what humans do best? What he designed us to do? Seek the truth. You are not ready for many of the truths you seek. You think knowledge is as, as simple to obtain as eating an apple? That is not the whole story. It is merely what I allow you to know. Then, what happened? Pain. Suffering. As I predicted. As I warned you. Begged you to trust that you were better off without. You have to be punished for breaking it. Or you would have never learned your lesson. I think you're the one who hasn't learned a lesson. Just because you may have made us doesn't make us lesser than you. You think you could handle the responsibilities of a god? You bet your ass I could if you're anything to judge by. To believe so demonstrates how ill-suited you are to the task. It proves just how lesser you are. Eat a dick, asswipe. Isaac, no! Stop! Stop it! The selfish delusion of a man, simply and pathetically. You think I do not see the desires that push you to such extremes? I ask of you, if you would be God, what would you do? I thought so. It was obvious from the start. I have unfinished business to attend to. Be sure to see to your own until my return. What the hell was that? Hell is right. Did you enjoy the video? Why not click the bell icon and subscribe to see more content from us at Tats.Videos. And now let's see the creators of this video.